name's Conrad Steiner. I'm a doctor of medicine. Tonight's story has the title, Breath of Life. Guardian of birth, healer of the sick, comforter of the aged. To the profession of medicine, to the men and women who labor in its cause, this story is dedicated. Our presentation tonight, the field of communicable diseases. The object in point, a respirometer. The case in point, Robert Allen Parker, MD. Dr. Parker's married and has two children. At 37 years of age, he's in the prime of life. He has a successful practice, which he's worked very hard to establish. And until a few weeks ago, he considered his most difficult struggles were behind him. But he developed a headache, stiff neck, slight fever. And within 72 hours, Robert Parker knew that the most critical struggle of his life had just begun. Watch his left arm. Keep it down at his side. Yes, Doctor. All right, careful. Let's light him in. Can't talk yet, Dr. Parker. Don't try. The air isn't reaching your vocal cords. All right, let's close it. Watch his arms. What's his vital capacity now? 950. He's gone down 100 cc's in the last hour. He's six feet one. We'll start him at 1618. Stay with him and keep checking the tidal air. Shall I put him on a positive now? You're going to feel a lot better, doctor. Now just try to relax and let the respirator breathe for you. You can talk all right, doctor, but you'll have to learn to do it with the respirator. You can only talk when you breathe out. I want to see Doctor. He's right here. Dr. Quillen. How bad is it? It's a little early to tell, Doctor. The respirator will give your chest muscles a chance to rest. You'll get some rest, too. Hey. Give me something. Let's see if we can get along without dropping your respiration any lower. What's he see now? Look, I'll make a deal with you. When my wife has a baby, I'll trust you with a delivery. That's your specialty. This is mine. Now you get some rest. How is he? All right at the moment. We have him in a respirator. Then there's no question about it. It is polio. I'm Kenneth Lusk. I'm a friend of Dr. Parker and of Mrs. Parker. I'll be taking over his practice until he's well. Glad to know you, doctor. How does it actually look? It's bulbar. His vital capacity dropped under a thousand. We've done a tracheotomy, put him on positive pressure. You said you did a tracheotomy. Isn't that when you cut into the throat? The tracheotomy tube provides a short, convenient airway. We give him oxygen through it under slight pressure, and that gives him additional help with his breathing. When will you know if he's paralyzed? Mrs. Parker, polio is a virus infection. It attacks the nerves that control muscles. Sometimes it actually kills the nerves. But you always have to expect temporary muscle loss while the disease is acute. Well, isn't there anything you can do to stop it? Just keeping quiet and breathing until it's run its course. I have two children, Doctor. What about them? They seem all right, don't they? No headache, nausea, stiff neck. I'll check them every day for a while. 
You may see him now if you like, but only for a few minutes. Ken, do you think I should? Go ahead. I'll wait here. Bob? Bob, I'm sorry. I came as soon as I heard. Children are fine. They sent their love. I told them they'd be seeing you real soon. That was stupid. You're gonna be all right. Everyone's pulling for you. They're doing everything they possibly can. Nobody can do anything. I'll make it myself. I'll finish it myself. Darling, please. I don't want sympathy. See the lawyer? See him. Bob, we'll talk about this later. Things changed. You started this. You see it through. Can't you understand? It's not because of this. Not because you're sick. I don't want to go through with it. I thought for one minute that you wanted me. That you needed me. Don't need you. Don't need anybody. Please try to rest. I'm right in the room if you need me. That's right, Doc. Rest. That's what they keep saying. How do you feel, Doc? The nurse is very polite. Always a sure sign it's a doctor. Take it easy, Doc. First hundred years. Hardest. Cut it out, George. It's tough enough in the beginning. The nurse is right, Doc. Sleep is the best thing. I can't sleep now. I can't move. Can you? I got both legs. And I'm just a new boy. Two months. You. Can you move? Sure thing. Got an arm. It's been coming back for a month now. I'm a machinist, Doc. Gonna be right back. Hear that? Sweetest sound in the world. How long? Has it been? Long enough so as I'm used to it. How long? He's been here nine months. God. You're wrong, Doc. Iron Lung's my friend. I'd be dead without it. Better that way. 
better to die. You won't feel that way. In a couple of days. Besides, how'd you do it? You couldn't kill a fly sitting on the end of your nose. Hello, Bob. How are you doing? I'm taking good care of your practice. Haven't lost one of your patients yet. Catherine's been calling. She's outside now. Look, Bob, this is none of my business, but why don't you see her? That's right. None of your business. Been thinking clearly. If I'm paralyzed, I'm going to kill myself. You take practice. You give Catherine settlement. Don't go throwing in the towel. Let me send Catherine in. I'll see you later. I didn't really think he'd see me. I left him, Ken. That's pretty hard to forgive. I understand about being a doctor's wife. I understood when I married him. I've seen him go days with just an hour or so sleep. There were other men that could have taken over, good, competent obstetricians, but, but he wouldn't trust anyone else. He, he wouldn't be dependent on anyone else. It's an obsession. He wouldn't let my father give us a church wedding. Only as a great concession, he let me keep the clothes I had. But everything else he had to make himself. All his own way. Well, he did it. But whatever good it's doing him now. And I love him, Ken. I love him so much. He's taking it just about as hard as I've ever seen anyone take it, Mrs. Parker. Some of them cry, go to pieces pretty badly. But at least it's a release. Bob wouldn't cry. That's a confession of weakness. He won't even live except on his own terms. Ken told me he's talking about suicide now. A lot of them go through that. But he certainly won't be able to do anything about it for the next few days. I don't know how much you know about polio, Mrs. Parker. But as his fever mounts, his dependence on the respirator will become total. The crucial phase of the battle during the acute period is to combat respiratory failure. The respirator will do the job which his paralyzed chest muscles can no longer perform. The trachea must be suctioned frequently to keep it clear of mucus so that the respirator can perform its function. Since his paralyzed throat muscles will not permit him to swallow, he must be fed through a levine tube which leads through the nose into the stomach. No specific treatment or medication can cure polio in its acute stage. Much of the watching and waiting is the job of the nurses and physical therapists. Under the physician's supervision, they maintain the respirator pressure and check the vital capacity, the temperature, and the pulse. Up or down? Give me the reading. You can give me the reading. I'm a doctor. If you can yell that loud, you know the answer yourself, doctor. When a sick patient gets cranky, he's getting better. How do you feel? Pain pretty severe. John's going to put you in hot packs for a while. My arms and legs gone. I can't move at all. We can't tell anything for sure until we complete a muscle check tomorrow. Now, the main thing for you to do is... Rest. That's right. All right, John, full treatment. Hey, Doc, I remember my first check. Everybody in the ward watching to see if I was gonna pass. When she got through, she says, Clifton, 
You're a very lucky man. Your legs aren't too bad. With a lot of hard work, you may have arms, too. Anybody could see that's a pretty lucky man. Couldn't they, Doc? You, uh, you ever give your uh, patients that kind of guff, Doc? I mean, some woman comes in, she is sick. You ever tell her she's lucky it ain't leprosy? Why don't you knock it off, Clifton? I just think it's funny, that's all. Having a doc in here. Doc, don't pay attention to him. I put in nine months. That's a lot longer than most. It's not so bad. Except maybe a little bit on Sundays. We used to go on a picnic on Sundays. Wife, kids, pack a lunch and just Take off. And then you like picnics, Doc? Never had time for one. Sometimes I wouldn't go no place in particular. Beach, maybe. Maybe just drive. But the kids miss it too. You sure get to needing your kids. Put your mind to it. You don't need anybody. When John Henry was a little boy sitting on his daddy's knee Pointed down to the ground Had a small piece of steel Saying that'll be the death Of me Lord, that You're getting better every day, Susie Prettier, too yeah, How are you today, Paul? Fine, Dr. Quirley. How the arm's starting to come back. It's very interesting. Why don't we check it, Miss Blakeney? Make a fist. Well, that's something to work on anyway. Hello, doctor. How are you doing? Going to do a muscle check? Right now. Mrs. Ackley. What are you doing? We're going to take you out of the respirator so the physical therapist can make a thorough check. <laughs> I can't breathe. Don't worry. If you have any trouble, we'll put you right back. Now, Doctor, we'll start with your right arm. Could you move your fingers, please? Just relax. Concentrate on making a fist. You certainly got something to work with there. Now the wrist. How far can you bend your elbow? Now let's try the left one. Make a fist. Now the wrist.
I'll try and bend the elbow. Very good. Touch your right shoulder. You've got a perfectly good arm there, doctor. I'll bring it down to your side and we'll check your legs. Pull up the toes of your right foot. Fine. Now push your hand away. Try it again, doctor. I can't. And raise the leg. Now can you hold it there? Let's try the other one. Left foot, doctor. The toes. Raise your leg. That's enough for today. Let's get you back. No point in overdoing it just as you're coming back. Very lucky man, Doctor. With some work, both arms should be fine. Without the bedside manner, will I be able to walk? Yes. Possibly not as well as before. You may need braces for a while, but you'll walk. There's a lot that can be done for you, Doctor. We can teach you to make substitute muscles do the work of useless ones. Before long, you'll be out of the respirator, and we can really go to work on you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bob. Bob, they just told me you'll be able to walk. It's wonderful news. Sure. I'll be able to limp. I want you to go through with the divorce. This wasn't in the marriage contract. Bob, listen to me. I didn't marry your legs. I married you. If you had to spend the rest of your life in this thing, I'd still want you. I mean, if you want me. Do you, Bob? had a good reason for loving you. I'm going to get him to start the exercises today. I'm going to work harder than I've ever worked. I'm going to work, walk perfectly. You'll see. Beat this thing. I'm gonna need a lot of help. I'm gonna need all the help I can get. Catherine. It's hard. You have witnessed the treatment of the disease in its acute stage. Actually, few polio victims suffer permanent disability. An extremely small percentage die. Although to date there is no cure, poliomyelitis will eventually be conquered, for any needless death represents defeat to a profession dedicated to life. <laughs>